Hello everybody, today is June 3rd, 2012, where they do the fracting. BP evidently has hired a company or joined a company to create synthetic bacteria and viruses. This article reads, The Gulf Blue Plague, BP. It's not wise to fool Mother Nature. It's not wise to fool Mother Nature. Those who think they can get away with it will abruptly learn that payback can be more than they bargained for. That's because nature will always retaliate in subtle retorts that shake the very foundation of this earth as well as life itself. Playing the role of creator is a very dangerous game. As part of their new logo and corporate image campaign, BP wants the public to think of them as their new slogan says, Beyond Petroleum. BP is far more than a simple oil company. What is revealed below regarding BP and their Beyond Petroleum activities, both prior to and including the Gulf of Mexico catastrophe, will create a picture for the reader one pixel dot at a time. Once the person who reads everything presented here connects all the dots of the picture, it will be more than obvious that BP has tried to fool Mother Nature and she's retaliating with a vengeance that is affecting the entire world. This is a perilous game that has now gotten out of control. What began in the Gulf of Mexico in February of 2010 has now escalated into a man-made biological no nightmare of unknown proportions. Synthetic Genomics On June 13, 2007, BP made a long-term research and development deal and an undisclosed equity investment into a company named Synthetic Genomics Incorporated. Based in Rockville, Maryland, Synthetic Genomics was co-founded by Dr. J. Craig Venter to commercialize genomic-driven technologies. Genomics is the scientific study of the entire DNA sequence of an organism's genome. A genome is the genetic information in the chromosomes of an organism, including its genes and DNA sequence. BP slash Synthetic Genomics recovered the DNA from subsurface hydrocarbon substrates, biological organisms that are in crude oil, and applied DNA sequencing methods to them. What this means is that they took the DNA from underground crude oil reserves microbial cells, such as bacteria or viruses, and cultured them in a lab to identify, isolate, and interpret their chemical genetic properties. Additional sequencing methods beyond the initial identity and isolation stages were also carried out. A central part of the deal between BP and synthetic genomics was to create biological transfer processes for crude oil that would lead to improved recovery rates. Their goal was to develop new microbes with lab-created genomes that would improve the flow of gas and oil out of a reserve. For an oil producer like BP, more oil and gas being recovered from a source translates into more profits. This process is also known as Microbial Enhanced Oil Recovery, or MEOR. Microbial Enhanced Oil Recovery is the use of microorganisms to retrieve additional petroleum product from an oil reserve. Microorganisms are introduced into oil wells to produce byproducts which help propel oil out of the well because these processes help to mobilize the oil and assist oil flow. They allow a greater amount to be recovered from the well. MIOR is a direct application of biotechnology. It uses biological materials such as bacteria, microorganisms, and products of their metabolism to assist the movement of oil out of the well. Other applications include genetic engineering techniques and recombinant DNA technology, which are used to develop new strains of bacteria with improved oil recovery traits. The microorganism can be applied to an entire oil reserve where they grow between the oil and the well's rock surface to enhance oil recovery in the following ways. Biosurfactant production. Microorganisms produce slippery substances called surfactants as they break down oil. Because they are naturally produced by biological microorganisms, they are referred to as biosurfactants. Biosurfactants act like slippery detergent, helping the oil move more freely from the
the rock in crevices. Reduction of oil viscosity. Oil is thick fluid. That is quite viscous, meaning that it does not flow easily. Microorganisms help break down the molecular structure of crude oil, making it more fluid and easier to recover. Production of carbon dioxide gas. As a byproduct of metabolism, microorganisms produce carbon dioxide gas. Over time, this gas accumulates and displaces the oil, driving it up and out of the ground. BP Synthetic Genomics Alliance was created on developing new microorganisms with lab-created genomes, synthetic DNA, to improve the outflow of gas and oil reserves. That alliance was publicly announced on June 13, 2007. As to what prior date the actual agreement was made is a corporate privacy matter. However, less than two weeks before the public announcement, on May 31, 2007, U.S. patent application number, and it gives a number, was published claiming exclusive ownership of a set of essential genes and synthetic free living organisms that can grow and replicate that is made using those genes. An international patent application at the World Intellectual Property Organization, published April 27, 2007, names more than 100 countries where it may seek monopoly patents. And then the article goes more into who has the stock and stuff like that. Since they were paying for the genetic research and to increase oil well flow and production, logic dictates that BP needed to apply a newly created microorganism product by their, produced by their alliance with synthetic genomics and to the oil reserve located beneath the Mississippi Canyon Block 252 lease in the Gulf of Mexico. According to BP's submitted U.S. Minerals Management Service application, there were to be two explorations, not production. Oil wells drilled and capped, designated as wells A and well B. Exploration wells are commonly used to inject or introduce microbial enhanced oil recovery microorganisms and their nitrates into an oil reserve for increased pressure and future production. The first exploration well had been partially drilled by Transocean in October of 2009, but their Marianas semi-submersible drilling rig was damaged by Hurricane Ida and was removed for repairs in late November of 2009. On February 3, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon semi-submersible rig commenced exploration drilling to complete the unfinished drilling operation of the Marinas rig. On February 13, 2010, BP informed the MMS, they were experiencing uncontrolled bursts of gas and large cracks at the base of the well. That was the reason they filed for and were granted a permit to abandon and cap the well the same day. Shortly after Deepwater Horizon commenced drilling the other exploratory well for BP, we all know the results of the second drilling operation that destroyed the Deepwater Horizon rig on April 22, 2010. One fact that can't be refuted regarding both exploration wells is the extreme gas pressure coming from the oil reserve and the resulting cracks in the ocean floor. Now, I have reported too that these cracks have been found as far as five miles from the rig, extending out from the rig. As noted before, MIOR microorganisms can be applied to an oil reserve where they grow between the oil and the well's rock surface to enhance oil recovery. As a byproduct of the metabolism, microorganisms produce carbon dioxide gas, and this gas accumulates and displaces the oil by driving it up and out of the ground. At the same time, microorganisms can break down the velocity of the oil so that it's thinner and can flow easier. The published commercial goal of BP Synthetic Genomic Alliance was to create new genetically engineered microorganisms to increase the flow of oil. A public trademark of that research involves man-made genome synthetic DNA controlling new artificial cellular organisms. Because of the vast estimate reserves of oil at MC-252 in the Gulf of Mexico, the temperatures involved in the extreme low oxygen death previously known or lab-enhanced microorganisms would not be affected in creating an increased flow of the oil. One can only imagine what the results would be of a new MIOR synthetic bacteria that had a computer DNA design capable to replicate itself rapidly in that extreme environment. The outcome would be unpredictable since it had never been tested in those conditions before or had it. 
In 2003, JCVI successfully synthesized a small virus that infects bacteria. By 2008, the JCVI team was able to synthesize a small bacterial genome. On May 6, 2010, JCVI revealed that they had already created a self-replicating bacteria cell controlled by a chemically synthesized genome they named Synthetic Microplasma Mycotes JCVI Syn 10.0, etc. This completely synthetic cell with its computer-designed genome was absolutely no natural DNA. The Accept group from Canada named it Cynthia, and it contains added watermark chains to identify the genome as artificial. It also has antibiotic resistant indicators. One can only speculate why this artificial bacteria has an inherent program capable to resist antibiotics. This new life form has the ability to replicate itself and organically function in any cell to which it has been introduced. Its DNA is artificial and its synthetic DNA that takes control of the cell and is recreated by being able to build blocks of life. This is the first replicating synthetic bacterial cell thanks to its computer generated DNA. All the funding for this came from Synthetic Genomics Incorporated. The company BP has a sizable equity position alliance with. BP is definitely way beyond petroleum just as their new slogan publicizes. Why watermark this artificial genome? Doing so makes it identifiable as the unique and patented privately owned asset it is. What happens if a human becomes infected with the life-threatening variant bacterial species of Cynthia? If you use penicillin to fight the infection, it won't do any good. Antibiotic resistant is part of the DNA sequence, so any use of antibiotics would be a waste of time. What would happen if mankind is contaminated by this self-reproducing artificial life form by contact or breathing it in? Would we become subjective to the DNA of the synthetic cells flowing throughout our bodies? Would the Cynthia cells combine with other bacterium within us to create new deadly bacterium? Since a microorganism is created and gets its programming from computers, would we be subject to artificial electromagnetic frequencies recognized by these genomes? There are a lot of questions that need to yet be answered. What matters most of all is, will we find those answers in time? Keep connecting the dots. The picture is starting to take shape now. The oil is there deep in the Gulf of Mexico. It's not going anywhere soon. It has a continual supply. There are no plumes of oil. There are no deep lakes of it. In a True News Radio interview with Rick Wells on June 28, 2010, the late oil industry expert Matt Simonson stated BP claimed to have the only technology to deal with this. When asked why the U.S. government wasn't taking over the Gulf of Oil crisis, considering their three-year alliance with synthetic genomics and the genetic creation they've made, it's very possible that the U.S. Federal Corporation in D.C. was convinced that BP's breakthrough geomatic technologies were the better gambling odd. There had never been so large of amount of crude oil to deal with before. For decades, science has eagerly pursued genetic modifications that would enhance natural microbial abilities to eat oil spills on both land and sea. Even with DNA recombinations, the bacterial gene splicing, there has been little positive success with improving on nature's natural oil eaters. Although his announcement silently slipped past the ears of news reporters from around the world, JCVI and Synthetic Genome founder Craig Venter foretold of and spoke openly of just such an application on May 15, 2010 during the public announcement, what the press is now calling Cynthia. He was referring to a Cynthia-based synthetic bacterial cell that would consume hydrocarbons more effectively than any known natural microorganism. It's worthy to note that one of the first patents on the genetically engineered organism was a hydrocarbon eating microbe in 1980 called the oil eater. The microorganism was actually a naturally occurring bacterium that had been given four rings of DNA that were also naturally occurring. This gave the bacterium the ability to 
degrade four components of crude oil. The article goes on to say that Scientific America says the last and only defense against the ongoing Deepwater Horizon oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico is tiny billions of hydrocarbon chewing microbes. In fact, the primary motive for using the more than 830,000 gallons of chemical dispersants on the oil slick, both above and below the surface of the sea, is to break the oil into smaller droplets that bacteria can more easily consume. If there was only a super high efficient microorganism available that could do the job much faster and more effectively. Wink wink. The dispersant factor. It's been puzzling to understand why BP has chosen to continually spray dispersant such as Corex from airplanes and boats day and night since the early May of 2010. The spraying hasn't just been over the Gulf but along the coastlines as well. While it's claiming that Corex disperses oil by breaking into smaller pieces, can this be the only reason for the spraying? In recent tests of rainwater originating from the Gulf of Mexico, natural mineral elements such as copper and iron were found along with nickel, aluminum, and magnesium. And that's very unusual for rain clouds originating from a saline ocean. The only logical explanation is that such elements were introduced into the Gulf waters where they were drawn up by the rain clouds. The only way that could have happened is from the aerial and surface spraying and or below surface injection. Are these ingredients of Corex? Not according to Nalco, the manufacturer. Then these natural earth elements must be added to what is being sprayed along with Corex. But why? What benefit is there to add elements like copper or iron to seawater? After all, these are natural elements and nutrients you would add to soil to make plants grow. So why would you add them to seawater? Bacteria thrive in rich nutrient environments. Natural minerals are necessary building blocks for nutrients that bacteria thrive on. Think of all the hydro fertilizing the Gulf to make it a better nutritional medium for hungry oil eating bacterium. The so-called dispersants are not only breaking down the crude into smaller pieces, they're adding needed enhancement material so that the bacterium can multiply more rapidly and eat up the oil faster. Such bacteria are called bioremediators. Cynthia has a cousin. The only ingredient missing is a new and previously unknown gene of hydrocarbon eating bacterium that can survive the cold water depths where the lakes of oil and tar now sit so it can degrade faster than any known natural bacteria. In a paper published in the Journal of Science, Terry Hazen and his colleagues at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory discovered in late May through early June 2010 that a previously unknown species of cold water hydrocarbon eating bacterium had been feasting on the underwater oil plumes, degrading them at an accelerated rate. We can now understand why. On May 15th, BP Synthetic Geonomes CEO Craig Venter hinted of a new hydrocarbon-eating synthetic genome. Prior to that date, JCVI had already applied for numerous additional patents, and it says we are able to find seven regarding synthetic bioremediation such as a bacteria synthetic genomes which provide unique DNA information required for replication of a free living organism. In layman terms, this means that BP synthetic genome scientists had already created self-replicating bacteria wherein the assembled DNA molecule is a synthetic genome back in 2007. And see that 2007? That's important to remember. That's when Homeland Security decided to release information, which was fake of course, about biological terrorists creating viruses that can kill the world's population. As I stated on WVP radio during our premier broadcast in August, there wouldn't be any hurricane entering the Gulf of Mexico this year. There hasn't been and there won't be. Otherwise, both the hurricanes and the jet stream will send the synthetic bacterium around the world. They have to isolate their biologically created nightmare until they can either find a way to control it or create a synthetic genome microbial vaccine to neutralize its effects. Could this have been their plan all along? On October 7, 2010, Synthetic Genomics Incorporated, the BP Equity Investment Company, and JCVI announced the formation of a new company, Synthetic Genomics Vaccines Incorporated, SGVI. The privately held company will focus on developing 
next generation vaccines using JCVI's geomatic sequencing and synthetic geomatic expertise coupled with the intellectual property and business acumen of Synthetic Genomics Incorporated to significantly advance and enhance vaccine development. How amazing that BP Synthetic Genomics Alliance now has its own vaccine company for patented immunizations. But at what cost to humanity? It's very profitable not only to create synthetic bacteria, but also offer a vaccine in case there are any problems. When you create a bacteria and control its DNA, you also know how to shut it down. Surely BP is far beyond petroleum. We are excited to apply our advanced synthetic geomatics technologies to revolutionize vaccine production, said the president of SGVI. The ETC Group is an international civil society organization based in Ottawa, Canada. They recently stated in a press release that synthetic biology is a high-risk profit-driven field building organisms out of parts that are still poorly understood. We know that lab-created life forms can escape, become biological weapons, and their use threatens existing natural biodiversity. More worrying of all, Craig Venter is handing this powerful technology to the world's most irresponsible and environmentally damaging industry by partnering with the likes of BP and Exxon to hasten the commercialization of synthetic life forms. We now have scientific confirmation of the previously unknown species of cold water hydrocarbon eating bacteria gobbling up oil in the Gulf. Nothing is known about how this new synthetic bioremediation bacterium in the Gulf reacts with mankind. This is a virgin uncharted territory where we already know how sea mammals such as whales and porpoises have reacted. Those who haven't escaped the affected area in the Gulf have died along with all other marine life and coastal vegetation. While human health effects from crude oil exposure are well known, the effects of dispersant containing oil eating artificial bacteria are not known. It's never been done before, let alone at the immense scale of operation that was taking place. Well, we now know that there's lots and lots of people that have health problems down there. Like I said, this article was written in 2010. There is a reason the so-called dispersants are guarded by weapon-yielding soldiers and local armed law enforcement in warehouses and deployment yards along the Gulf Coast. If the sample were to be analyzed by knowledgeable people, the biological and chemical anomalies it contains would be made public, right down to the unique DNA signature. BP keeps allowing their sorcerer's brew to be called Cordex in order to hide the fact that it's not just the name brand product anymore. The physical symptoms of BP flu, BP crude, blue flu, or whatever you choose to call it, are as unique as in synthetic bacteria being used in the Gulf. Since mankind is carbon-based, how do these synthetic created hydrogen and carbon-hungry bacteria react to human flesh? Internal bleeding as well as ulcerating skin lesions are a physical sign of their computer-created DNA signature. BP and their paid minions have released a synthetic biological plague in the Gulf of Mexico, and it's out of control. The entire world is its victim of their greed and foolishness. By playing the role of creator, they have begun a very dangerous game with infinite repercussions for life as we know it. Those who have permitted and agreed to this cover-up are just as responsible as BP. Those of us living on the Gulf Coast must demand from every politician and government agency, from the national to the local level, an explanation to why they allowed this to happen and why they are allowing it to continue. They are all responsible for lying to us and for covering up the truth. Have you connected all the dots? Do you see the complete picture now? And this is evidently a colonies of synthetic transform bacterium. All right, bookmark my site. I'll keep everyone up to date. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.